started with the doom and gloom. Uh, you know, oil is down. The Canadian dollar, in comparison to uh, the American dollar, is probably not where Canadians would want it. Uh, but what do you see in terms of how is that affecting uh, the, the activity from here? Phil, let's start with you. Well, economically, the uh, country has never been uh, so divided. I shouldn't say never. Contemporary times. Uh, things are very good, actually, in our, our uh, number uh, one and number three most populous provinces. The, 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 the very dire situation we find in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and parts of Atlantic Canada sometimes overshadow what is a uh, really a strong economic picture, uh, particularly as it relates to real estate in our most popular, populous provinces. In New York, really in the United States as a whole, the macro data, economic data, is actually pretty good. So you hear a lot about the doom and gloom about what's going on in the real estate market in New York and South Florida, and everybody's, you know, we've heard the last panel talking about corrections and cycles, but interestingly, um, the macro data is pretty good. I think, I think to piggyback on what Michael said, when you look at the macro, Particularly, I think one of the telling stats is the CMBS market, which in 07 peaked at like $230 billion worth of CMBS issuance. We peaked last, I don't think this year is going to be more than last year. We peaked last year at like $110 billion. And over this four or five year cycle, it has been a fraction of what it was during the last cycle. What's the Canadian activity like in the multifamily sector in New York? It's not as high as you would think. If you look at uh, the most active Canadian investors the last five, ten years, it's, it's really the larger pension funds, and they're targeting much larger assets. Uh, Style Town, five point three billion, for example. We don't see that much activity in the sub fifty million dollar space yet from Canadian buyers. They're very active in the over fifty million dollar uh, arena. I think we saw something similar with Chinese influence. The Chinese were basically looking for condo yields when they first entered the New York market. You really didn't see a lot of Chinese money playing in the multifamily sector. Slowly but surely, the, the Chinese institutions realized that that stability of the multifamily market at a, a less sexy yield is something that has validity. JD, uh, if we step out of New York and Miami, look, you know, love your active there. Uh, what what other secondary markets are showing up on you know investors' radars? Maybe from Canada or other foreign investors now. You know, looking at these markets, whereas uh, prior they may have only looked at New York and Miami. Specifically, I really like the Carolinas. We do a lot of uh, sales there, retail specifically. Though, so, uh, you know, Southern California has bounced back. Vegas has recovered nicely. There's a lot of really good secondary markets if you want to chase yield, but you know that's not typically what the foreign buyers doing. They're going to the core market. And they have a longer term plan to buy a you know core asset. I'll say I don't think you need to leave the prime area to get to the secondary cities. I think Brooklyn as a secondary city in the New York market is starting to become core, and you have foreigners now recognizing the strength of Brooklyn and actually looking at it as core. Where I think the last cycle, if you would say Brooklyn to certain foreign investors, they would look at you sideways. Now we're heading into an election where you know the question of identity, religious identity, is at, at the center in a, in a way that you wouldn't expect it to be in you know 2016. Uh, Sharif, what what do you think of what's happening? You know, the, the Donald Trump and some of the rhetoric, and I want to ask everybody this is this is this important? How do you? Uh, a lot of people say it's just rhetoric. You know, he he'll figure it out as it goes. But rhetoric is important. So how do you think it's affecting? The landscape in the U.S. As, as, a, as a businessman in the U.S., as an individual, to start with. You know, uh, uh, candidly, I, I think it's embarrassing. I mean, it's uh, it's embarrassing when you have such a prolific, established, uh, intelligent individual uh, creating, you know, such a divisive conversation uh, that's not just uh, uh, having ramifications within our own borders but having ramifications with our neighbors uh, and having somebody so prolific uh, and, and somebody who has the ability to be a statesman, yet choosing uh, a rhetoric and a conversation that has the complete opposite is embarrassing. I'm actually here for, for two reasons. One, I'm scouting for a second home in the event that he wins. <laughs> But, but secondly, if he did win, I think there's going to be a rush for Canadian real estate, and 
and you know that would be a good investment prior to him winning, which I don't think will happen, hopefully. So you know, we're sitting in probably the epicenter of political correctness, Canada, right? And you're hearing this kind of rhetoric. Uh, how do you feel uh, in terms of, has this ever come up? It, it may not have, but you just see an official here, but is this something that people are concerned about? Oh, no, absolutely. I think even even we, we've had a government change uh, very recently. The new guy's inclusive. He's, uh, he, he may do some damage economically, time will tell. It's certainly going to get more expensive for the people in this room, which are the demographic that are going to be paying for some of the programs. But in terms of Brand Canada, uh, the brand's taken a real leap forward, and uh, the, the uh, assets that we have to sell to the world are made more attractive by a regulatory environment and a culture that is welcoming. I'd like to open it up to questions, if there's any here. How much weight do you see overseas investors have on the real estate market, either if it's in the U.S. or in Canada, and um, to those who know the Canadian market, and what that actually means for local buyers and local investors? I think uh, when, when you look at the landscape of, of New York and Toronto, I think there's a lot of uh, similarities between the two markets. I think first and foremost, I think we're going to set some records this year with respect to Asian money that's coming uh, into the real estate market. Uh, and I also feel the same way about Middle Eastern money. And I think that that translates into a more stable market for ultimately the residents of that city or that environment. Uh, in addition to more stability and more uh, potential growth, which ultimately the residents would get the benefit of in their respective cities and, and, and demographics.